All right, welcome back, and let's continue with module six. Now we're getting to the IP addressing again. I will have a separate video for the addressing of IPv4 and IPv6, so you'll be required to do that as well. <clears throat> okay, so when we're talking about an IPv4, an IPv4 address is made up of 32 bits, and it's typically written something similar in decimal format. So when you have this 192 and 68.10.10, .10, each of those decimal numbers that's separated by a decimal point is 8 bits. So when you convert a decimal to binary, you get 8. This is another 8 bits. This is another 8 bits. And this is another 8 bits. So it makes up 32 bits. Okay. Uh, this is, you know, sometimes you'll see it that it's slash 24. It means the first 24 bits is your network portion. And the last portion is your host so this is saying that uh, host number 10 is in network 192.168.10 maybe number nine will be in 192.168.10 another guy could be dot 15 in the same network 192.168.10 okay so the ip address consists of two things a network portion and a host portion routers on the other hand don't like to see they don't care about who you are, the host portion of the IP address. They don't care about who you are in what network. So they mask this. That's why we use a network mask, subnet mask address, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. Okay, so um, a subnet mask, for example, when you write a subnet mask, it tells you when you get 255, it's telling you that this address, we don't want to mask it. We don't want, when you put a zero, you want to mask the host portion of the IP. So it tells the router or the device that this 192.168.10 is located in 192.168.10, number 10 guy. If you have another zero here, that means the host portion is 10.10, .10, which is located in 192.168, okay? So uh, it identifies the network portion of the IP primarily, okay? The default gateway means that the IP address, all the hosts in the LAN must know who the default gateway is. Because if you're not trying to communicate with anyone in your LAN, by default, you go to the gateway, which is your router. Everybody must know who the router is, who the gateway is, gateway to the outside world. If you don't know the IP address of the default gateway, you will not be able to communicate with the outside world. Okay? All right. The mask, again, the mask will mask, will hide the host portion of IB, uh, uh, IP address and will reveal the network portion. So when you see all ones, we do what we call logical ending. And this will flow out. So when you, just like taking a filter, when you put this subnet mask address as a filter on top of this IP address, it will reveal the network portion and mask the host portion of the IP. How does that happen? By, by, by using what's called logical ending, A and D. Sometimes instead of going back to this for a second, well, let's continue. So sometimes we write the network. See, all ones, if you convert this into binary, into decimal, you'll see that it's 255. Eight ones is zero. Slash eight means you have eight ones in the mask. Slash 16, you have 16. Slash 24, 25 means you have 25 ones. Okay, and you write it in decimal this way. So when you are typing it on a piece of paper or writing it down, you would write slash. Slash the number, that number indicates how many ones are in the mask address. Or, because this is what's going to be filtered out, the first 25 bits of the 32 bit of the IP address. So that means the first 25 bits are going to be your network portion of the IP. So this slash 25, for example, it's saying to you that the first 25 bit of the IP address is your network portion of the IP, and whatever is left over is your host portion, which is seven. 
right? The last seven bits is your host portion. So the slash 25, the prefix, slash 25, you can do two things out of it. You can find out what the mask address is by just writing 25 ones, and then whatever is left over is zeros, left over to get to 32, right? And just separate each eight by a dot, and then convert these binary addresses to decimal. Like eight ones is 255. Take a picture of this. All right, so how do they do that? They do what's called logical ending. Logical ending means that it's like a gate. When you have the inputs are both one and one, the result will be one. The gate will open. Think of it that way. If both bits are not one, the gate will not open. It will be closed. Okay? That's what logical ending. So what does that mean? How does this filters out? So when you see one and one, you'll get a one. One and one, you get a one. So when you put all 255, you'll see when you are ending zero and one, you get a zero. So when you are ending a number with 255, you get the number back. But when you're ending a number with zeros, you are masking it. It becomes zeros regardless of what this number is. So that's what routers use. They will take this IP address, end it with the mask, and what they see is the network portion by masking the host. Okay? That's what that means. All right. So that's that. It's a good idea to take a picture of this too. Screenshot. All right. So when you are, so please do watch this video. I think this is a pretty good video that will give you a little bit more in depth of explanation to differentiate between the network, the host, and the broadcast address too. All right, so why do we subnet broadcast domains? Now, remember, a broadcast domain is a LAN, a subnet. Broadcast domain means when you are sending a broadcast message, any host attached to any of these switches sends a broadcast message, like an ARP request, it will not go out of this G00 to any other interfaces. So that's what the routers do they contain a broadcast message within the LAN. They separate LANs. You can talk to someone else in another LAN, but if you send a broadcast message to everybody in your LAN, you stay within your LAN, okay? <clears throat> so broadcast, again, broadcast domains are LANs. So you, can, you, you need a router to separate them. Switches do not do that. So you can have either in location, if you're on the first floor, you get your own LAN. Second floor, you get your own LAN and so on. Or you can do it by department. If you are the engineering department, you'll be in your own LAN. If you are the human resources, you get your own LAN. Students, your own LAN and so on. Or type, you know, all hosts will be connected to this LAN, G00, LAN 3, LAN 4 and so on. But typically it's either by department, or location. The most widely used is you separate them by department because then, then you can put all their resources attached to this one switch, for example. All right, the different types of IPv4 addresses. There are three classes originally in the 1980s were designed. Class A, Class B, Class C. Class A says, if the first number is between 1 and 127, then you're in Class A and therefore you are, you are, the first byte is your network address. If your number is between 128 and 191, then you're in class B, the first byte. And therefore you're in class B, that means the first two numbers is your, is your host, uh, is your network address. In class C, if you are between 192 to 223, then you're in class C, and that means the first three bytes is your network address, that's what slash 24. All right, take a picture of this. Class D is for multicasting, which means if you want to send data to more than one device in a LAN, not everybody, everybody meaning broadcast, right? So that's broad, uh, that's multicasting. You're, if the first byte is between 224 and 235, then it's a, it's a multicast address. For internet experimentation, if the IP address begins with 240 to 255, 
that is for um, internet um, experimentation. So um, class D and class E are never used for hosts for communications, only classes A, B, and C. Take a picture of this. All right, this is, shows you the, um, the available IP address. So class A, 50% of all the IP addresses are within class A. Class B has 25% and class C is 12.5%. Then the other two is 12 and a half. Uh, So take a picture of this. This comes up sometimes on even though um, IPv4 and classless is really not needed anymore. But questions may come up on either the CompTIA Network Plus or maybe the CCNA. Now, the, at the first byte, we don't need a sub net mask really address to really use this in the old days we call these class list but then when we got to uh, class full class full mean we need to know what class the ip address is to find out what what's the network portion of the ip we don't really need a sub net mask address to figure it out but later on in the late 1980s into the 90s they made the sub net mask address and to be backward compatible we gave class A, class B, and class E some default subnet mask addresses. So class A has a slash 8, class B has slash 16, class C has slash 24. All right. Now, some addresses, to be able to conserve IP addresses so you don't lose as many, they... Um, IETF came up with private IP addresses. Private IP addresses are only used within the LAN. You don't have to call an ISP and pay for it. So any IP address that begins with 10 or 172.60 or 172.31 or 168.10. And it doesn't matter. You can make up with these numbers. These can be used privately in the LAN and you don't need anybody to, con and you can configure your devices in the land, but you can't get on the internet. If you need to get on the internet, your IP address that's configured in the land as a private IP address will go to the default gateway. The gateway will be running NAT and AT, the network address translation protocol, and it will translate your IP address from, from private to public. So when you come back, it will translate you back to your private IP address. Why do we call it private? Because people on the outside world do not know what your IP address inside the LAN is. They have to go through the router, and that will translate you. And you're conserving IP addresses. You know, if you're not getting on the Internet, you're not using these uh, public IP addresses that you purchase and give NAT to translate. You need to know what the private IP addresses block are, so write that down. That private IP address is blocks. There are some reserved IP addresses that you cannot use. For example, um, the 127.001, that's really used for um, to test the loopback address, to make sure that the IP, TCP IP stack is done correctly. The network address, when the host portion of the IP is all zeros, you cannot use that to give it to a host because that identify what network you are in. If the host portion of the IP address is all ones, you can't use that either because that's the, your broadcast address. That's an address, that's an address that you sent so everyone in your land is, is able to receive it. All right, so let's talk about the default gateway. We did talk about the default gateway prior to this. So very important to understand. Your default gateway is this dot one guy. So he will have 192.168.10.1. This PC, which is dot 15, must also know his default gateway is 192.168.10.1. This PC one also, 192.168.10.10, must also know his IP address, his default gateway, which is 192.168.10.1. Everybody in the LAN that needs to communicate with the outside world have to go through the gateway. Why do we call it default? Because if any device in the LAN is not communicating with 
anybody in the land by default. He